Hey, what's going on, Cowboys Nation, man? Just going to give you some my, give you some of my opinions, man, based on um, number eleven and how his his past um, football history made him the player he is today and the player he hopes to become. So, not, I never I never uh, put this on any of my videos. Um, I'm from the same hometown Mike grew up in. Also, the same home hometown where. Uh, Skywalker steals from man. So this is this. I wasn't I wasn't trying to create any bias and make it seem like oh I'm going for Micah just because he's from my hometown. Even though that was the case, but I never you know made that assumption and, or wanted people to believe that um, I'm only riding with Micah because of where he's from. But he played solely running back and DN in high school. He may have been flexing other positions, you know. What I mean, just to show his vers versatility, but that was his main position. And then he went to Penn State, where he played two years at linebacker. His junior year, he opted out and got ready for a draft. So he came into the, the Cowboys situation as a linebacker with only two years of experience. Now, a lot of you guys already know this because you may have seen other videos and they, they, they probably gave you their takes on, you know, he he should be here. He should be here in the draft, or we shouldn't. He shouldn't be a top ten pick or a top five pick, or however the dominoes may fall. But it's a miracle when you look at how far he's came with one year removed from playing football and only playing this position for two years in college. This is my opinion. And then he comes into a situation where he's uh, being molded by. One of the best defensive minds today in the NFL, Dan Quinn. Now, I'm not going to say um, what Michael would have became or how he would have been playing or what level he would have reached if he would have went to a different team and he didn't have Quinn. But I can tell, man, even in uh, training camp and preseason, you can tell that Dan Quinn had his hands all over Michael as far as molding him and um, pushing him. In a, in a certain um, a certain position flex that he wanted him to be accountable for and, and be dominant in. And that's something that you see very early in his career because he was able to transition from um, college for two years at linebacker to becoming one of the best young linebackers in the NFL in only nine, ten games. And, and and with the with the molding and, and the, the teaching and the knowledge that he he receives from Dan Quinn, it put it put him in a situation where he's one of the favorites for a rookie of the year on the defensive side of the ball. And not just rookie. Like not just rookie. Like with if he if he continues on this uh, trajectory and with the potential and everything that he's showing us on the field one day man he might be the mvp of the league for defense and and you can't deny it when he's able to just do everything he's doing in 10 games at linebacker it's it's, it's incredible man that's a testament to his dedication and the testament to um how great dan quinn is as a defensive coordinator and then and then when i started to look around the draft class because a lot of people would have chosen this player or this player because they were more versatile in college. It was a lot of people that showed that um, they can play different positions because that that system, that coach allowed them to. A lot of people thought Micah couldn't cover because Penn State didn't ask him to cover. They asked him to go. They asked him to make tackles in a run game. Or run side on the sideline if it's a screen or something in the flats, go make a play. You didn't really see him cover too much, and that's because the system didn't um, allow him to do that. Like I seen in like the new 2K, I haven't played it, but I I seen some highlights where I seen some things they do different. You can you can pick different colleges, and different colleges offer different systems to let your players succeed. So you have to really not just be like, oh, I like this team. I like the location. I like their jersey colors. I like their logo. You can't. You have to look at what that school offers and what they're able to help you do to um, push you to the next level. So I think a lot, a lot of people have to look at 
this these this whole college notion that uh, a player can do this even though it's on the film i understand that but um you have to understand that certain certain schools and certain defenses are predicated to just stopping a run so they want their whole they want every linebacker to be focused on stopping the run not so much um like rushing the passer because Michael can rush the passer. He done it and he's done it in high school and he was one of the best to ever do it around here. So that's just, you know, how I feel about the oh he can't cover because Penn State didn't ask him to cover. They didn't ask him to rush the passer as much. He blitzed, but it's not how he's doing it now in the NFL. He what he's doing now is he's showing you guys what he's done in high school and what he's done in college on the defense side of the ball. And he's combining them along with the knowledge of Dan Quinn. And this is what you see on the field. A lot of people want him to be um a pass rusher. Now, of course with the injury to uh Randy Gregory and also D Law, a video's coming on that also by the way. But along with those injuries, they wanted him to play um, end before Gregory got hurt. And the, the biggest thing I'm taking from that is that our run defense was the worst it's ever been last year. We let the Browns run for almost 300 yards. Ain't nobody running for 300 yards on this this year with Michael on a linebacker. Ain't nobody running on the, Like, if you look at our run defense is vastly improved and it's not just average it's one of the best in the league now you, of course we're going to have <clears throat> excuse me of course we're going to have games where you know we just get out coached and the effort isn't there so you know we may give up big plays but it's nothing compared to what we've seen last year nothing and a lot of that is a testament to Micah Parsons and also uh, Dan Quinn just my opinion man And then if you um, if you go back some time, man, it was I think it was the uh, the second year for LBE. We played the Saints. It was early in the season, and he looked horrible. And I haven't I haven't um, looked at the film on that game. I was watching the game, and when I watched the game, like I look at where the offense is attacking, and I look at why they're going in that direction consistently. And uh, and it was because of LBE. He looked horrible. He was moving slow. He wasn't. He wasn't to his um, what we seen to, what we seen from him in his rookie year, and a lot of people were still in that notion like LVE is one of the best linebackers, and I called it early. And also another guy, a uh, big game James man, he 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 um, he tweeted something out, and I agreed with him. And then it was people that you know that was disagreeing because they thought LVE was something um, similar to what he had his rookie season, and I wasn't saying he wasn't that. I just was saying that game he didn't show it. And I think, I think now when you when you when this high set twenty twenty you look back, I think a lot of this is because of his his injury. He wasn't fully comfortable ever again since his rookie year, and that's maybe why you see him um, not playing on, on that same intensity level. This is just what I've seen. So now it all makes sense that we didn't we didn't uh, get Slater and we didn't get um, Horn and. Patrick Sertan, like we needed a linebacker. And this linebacker is changing the game. He's able to, if you look at, like if you look at him on the tackle, this on the tackle, um, the tackle vibe alone, he's one of the best tacklers in the NFL. It's rare you see him miss. Like I've, it, it was times where he hasn't missed, but I think over these last few games, he, he uh, missed a few tackles or whatever. But still with that, with those, uh, negative plays which which ain't really negative it's him still learning it's not like he's he's set in stone of who he's going to be as a player but even with those plays he still has become one of the best tacklers who takes the best angles on our team this is this is just me man from based off of what i'm saying everyone everybody has different set of eyes even people with 2020 vision it can be a thousand people with 2020 vision and they all see things differently man so this is just me now in closing, man, um, this is just how I feel. Um, two things actually. So with with um, the comparison that you have with um, Young from from the Washington football team and also Micah, a lot of this is based off of um, Young being a pass rusher, a sole 
pass rusher. He was drafted to play on a, on a defensive line and rush the quarterback and stop stop run plays. Get run plays stopped. Now, Micah was um, drafted as a linebacker. But when you put the the snaps together and the games together, when they're both lined up to pat uh, to to put pressure on the passer, Micah better than this dude. Micah's better than this dude, and this was somebody that was drafted number one. That didn't miss any. I didn't miss a full season because of the situation we was facing in, in this country and in this world. He played. Like all three seasons, I'm pretty sure he had a few injuries there in Ohio State, but he he didn't have to make a big transition from defensive end in Ohio State to defensive end in in Washington or uh, Maryland. <laughs> That's kind of weird though, man. They play in Baltimore, man, or they're in Landover, Maryland, I believe. Kind of weird to me. Um, but Micah had a bigger hurdle to jump over. Coming from Penn State, missing a, missing one full season, and then playing linebacker and also playing DN, and he's still outperforming this dude. Still. Now y'all, y'all ask yourself who, ask yourself this, man. Based off of all these players that's coming out in in last year's draft, it was a lot of people that didn't want Michael Parsons. They were upset when we drafted Michael Parsons. Now you tell me, who? Who can we have drafted in his place and we and would have helped us more? Even with the injuries to um Tyron Smith and and the rustiness of Layout Collins, even with the supposedly bad cornerback play at times on our defense, who what player would you rather have Dallas taken? Instead of Mike and Parsons, man. Or Mike and Parsons, man. Thank y'all for taking. Thank y'all for, you know, selecting a video. This is just my opinion, man. Y'all let me know who who do you think the Cowboys should have taken and we would have been more successful, man. Y'all have a good one. Stay blessed.